This show is brought to you by Altstadt Holdings, retail and office spaces in Altstadt, Vancouver. I welcome you to a new show of Ahon TV and today I welcome you for the topic Immigration to Canada. And I got two guests here, Tini Wieder and Monika sievers Redekop. So Monika, uh, tell me um, what do you do exactly as an immigration lawyer? Well, I assist people who would like to immigrate to Canada, of course, with respect to their immigration application, which is now called permanent residency, which means you can stay permanently in Canada, and can work and live here for five years, renew your permanent resident card, keep staying here, keep staying here, and eventually apply for citizenship if you like. But okay, before we go now to the details, yes. because I know you, you, you have probably a lot of stories to tell us, yeah. uh, we should quickly ask you, Tini, uh, so you are a victim of immigration? Yes. <laughs> You, you finally did it, but you had, you had some uh, uh, hurdles which you had to overcome. And it, it doesn't matter actually, uh, or maybe I mentioned it to our viewers, so you came from Austria. Mm -hmm. and you, but but your, your clients are from all over the world, but of course with a focus probably uh, mainly from Germany, I guess. From German-speaking countries, German -speaking. that's correct. So including so Austria and Austria, Switzerland. Switzerland yeah. And, you know, the... Well, also French, Irish people, yeah. primarily. But, but is, it, is that actually uh, so that, for example, the Chinese go to a Chinese immigration lawyer? Because the, the know-how you got too, right? So it doesn't matter. But it, it probably they feel, they f it doesn't matter, no? It doesn't matter. Yeah, so they probably feel more comfortable if they go to, to one of their own, own people uh, when they come to Canada, I guess. Um, I, I would say definitely that's the case because you can relate to, you know, whoever's cultural background they have. Like I, I'm obviously not Chinese and I never lived there for an extended time, so I'll have a harder time, you know, yeah. comparing, you know, what are the odds they're up against if they immigrate to Canada, whereas if I consult with, uh, you know, Austrian, German, Swiss people, I know exactly how the system and the culture works in those countries and what's different in Canada. So my advice is not always legal, it's often also, is it a good choice for you or exactly. will you be just utterly disappointed when you arrive here because the whole country is not up to what you had expected when you spent your holidays here. Now, it's, it's exactly what you're saying and the interesting part is uh, in the uh, actually in the television scene in Germany, they have a lot of uh, we we call it Auswanderer Sendungen, mm -hmm. and also uh, I think there's uh, right now a little bit uh, uh, they're also looking for people who actually got disappointed. You know, they got uh, you know where they where they totally screwed up with their life over here. Can you actually tell us what the ratio is approximately of those who? whom you uh, got the permanent residency or whatever they, they asked you to what they want and uh, the ratio and uh, the return ratio. Uh, so how many people actually went back after 10 years or after 5 years because they couldn't make it here? The people that I yeah. brought into the country? Exactly. I would say maybe 10%, 15%? 3%? 3 3%? 3%. Max I would say. But, I mean, that is not saying that's, that's a total. I'm, I'm sort of a bit hesitant to try and get someone into the country who is maybe borderline, who has a much higher income and higher um, standard of living in Germany than they would encounter here, except if he clearly or she clearly states, you know, I want to get out of the red race. I want to have, you know, a calmer life. I think, you know, nature and the karma pace in you know Western Canada is just so the right thing for me. So this is how you uh, describe Western Canada, a, mm -hmm. a calmer life and... Uh, <laughs> Compared to Germany, <laughs> Switzerland and Austria? Yes, it's uh, well although uh, Tini, do we have a red race here? Don't, don't we have also a red race over here? <laughs> yeah sure and I think I know what you mean and probably Austria is even slower than Canada or West Canada mm -hmm. so I don't know I, and it's 
clearly I'm very focused on the film and TV business as well. So for me, there's bigger project. There's a, a lot of more going on than compared to Germany. Uh, they can compete with that, but uh, Austria is really was ch far too small for me. I was looking for a bigger challenge for bigger projects, and Canada was it for me. But it was a big, big challenge to do the whole immigration process without a lawyer. Since um, when I hear that, I'm, I would have loved to have met you before and just have someone who supported me because I did everything on my own, which took about five and a half years. Um, and not only because I think I did so much wrong, but I, they just put me somewhere and then I had to wait a year for the next mm -hmm. things to hand in. Th now that's interesting. You said you're in the film industry. Mm -hmm. Isn't the competition really high here? I mean, uh, Definitely. Uh, how do you think actually you can really get in here? Because uh, Everything is really well structured with unions and guilds. Mm -hmm. You first even have to get into a guild probably to get a job. So how are you going to do that? Yeah, it's, it's more possible opportunities. The one way would be to be part of a union. And I have over 10 years experience, so it's kind of, I actually asked them before, I did all my research and they told me that it's possible. So uh, with someone who has no experience at all, that might be a big challenge. So but what's it with the whole film business is networking. So all I'm doing yeah, is networking. meeting people, meeting people. But, but uh, quickly to you, uh, Monica, I've noticed when I came, for example, over here, the producers, they said, okay, what's your experience? I mean, and this is in a lot of cases, I think. It has nothing to do with film. But they say, what is your experience? And you say, well, back in my home country, I had my 10 years, 15 years of work in this specific field, and uh, I'm perfect for, your, for your, what you're looking for. And they say, okay, you know what, we are looking, we want to know what you have done and what you can do. I mean, literally, that's what I heard. I want to see what you have done, what you can do. And what have you done here? And then you say, well, I just immigrated. And they say, well, uh, <laughs> then you have to start like everyone else from scratch on. Did it happen to some of your clients? Yes, that's often the case. And usually that's what I advise my clients. So, you know, you won't have any of those I think RTL Sendungskandidaten yeah. who are my clients. I usually advise them. You know, you have to start often, very often. You have to start from scratch. Um, particularly, yeah, your business or you know, medical doctors, lawyers, um, highly educated people. Very often, whereas tradespeople, they're gute Handwerker. Yeah. They are very welcome here because we in, in Germany and I believe Austria, Switzerland as well, they have a very well a set up system going through a apprenticeship program and you know having the work experience and being really very well qualified. Yeah, they, they don't have this sort of apprenticeship program here. No, I think. I mean in, 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 in Europe they have for everything an apprenticeship program. I mean, you need a license to do certain things. Uh, also here, I mean, the carpenters are quite well educated. But how does it work? I think carpentry, for example, these kind of things, if I recall it right, you actually learn it at university. They have these kind of courses at university, no? No, it's colleges. And or colleges. And get some work experience. Yeah. And yeah, the, the qualified carpenter would have his red seal, but uh, German carpenter, Austrian carpenter, they wouldn't need the red seal. They could start right away, and it depends province to yeah. province. So BC doesn't need this qualification. Mm -hmm. However, they just introduced a new trades program for immigrants to enter Canada without a job offer. And if you want to do it without a job offer, now they made the qualification you have to apply here for a red mm -hmm. seal. What oh. lots of carpenters or cabinet makers yeah. or electricians don't even have here in Canada, they require they the foreign worker now to have it. Mind you, this is only for immigration. If someone has a job offer, he still can come without the red seal. Now, since we talk about this, uh, one and a half years ago, we had Mr. Klose here. He was in charge of the North Atlantic uh, connection okay. between, yeah, between, between Canada and, and Germany. Okay. And it was very interesting. I asked him, why actually in Germany um, doctors who are really highly qualified, and now I'm comparing now, mm. highly qualified to go to Germany, they, they are known in their country 
as a good doctor and, and uh, good professor, why do they still have to uh, go through the whole process here to get their medical license? I remember he said because uh, a lot of people from third world countries, not, he didn't say it literally like that, but from third world countries would buy their, the possibilities there that they buy, for example, their title as a doctor. And that's why in Germany they have this kind of rule. You have to go th again through this whole process to, to get the license. Is, is that the same view over here? That the, in yeah, Canada? Yeah, even that you that come with a great... That could be fraud? There, th that's one... It could be fraud, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one option. But usually I guess they detect if it's fraudulent, the, the, the license that is being presented it so seems you can the, buy somewhere your license, right? Oh yeah. Like in Italy? <laughs> it seems the officers sort of have a good nose for that to pick it out. But also, I mean, that could be one reason, but I think uh, the primary reason is really uh, the aspect of competition. And we have it for ah. lawyers, for engineers. So the, the so they want to protect professional you. bodies, yeah. the associations, they want to protect their um, profession here, mm -hmm. and there are already so and so many medical doctors, although there's always a shortage. Absolutely. But, but you know, and where they make exemption if, is if someone wants to apply way out, you know, in a very remote area, then they say, okay, this person can come over and go in sort of an apprenticeship program with a doctor out, you know, in the wilderness, and then you so, can immigrate. So is there, is there a list? Which, which, uh, which is provided by the government of Canada, where I can actually look up. Let's say I'm a doctor, a veterinary doctor. Mm -hmm. Can I look that list up and say, okay, oh, awesome. They're looking for veterinary doctors. I have a chance to come over. Or they're looking no. for producers. I have a chance to come over. They don't have them. Well, not for doctors. But there is, currently, there is a list for trades. Mm. There are 43 pr professions. And uh, there so if, are... If my profession would be in that... Yeah, but yours isn't, unfortunately. No, but no. <laughs> no, not as a producer. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> nobody so let's wants to produce. No, I mean, <laughs> nobody uh, wants yeah. to produce. So, and that's what Too I expensive. just... expensive. Yeah, that's what I just referred mm. to. It's the trades mm. and supervisors and trades and oil and gas industry. So there, right now, there's a whole list. You can yeah. go on CIC's Citizenship and Immigration Canada's website. And then you can look at the list, mm -hmm. and you can say, "Okay, I'm one of those, or I'm one of those." Okay, but, but <laughs> there is a cap on those uh, professions. Mm -hmm. They only allow certain professions only a hundred per professional description. Others more up to a cap of one year of total three thousand applicants. Mm -hmm. Did that list shrink extremely? It was much higher, more professions. Oh, the, that was that, it? that. I that heard list, about that too. That list is in constant motion, <laughs> I would say. Now, Tini, you have gone through the stages of um, young professional? No, uh, no, no, no. Or just a work and travel visa? No, no, no. It was Not even that? No. It ah. was the skilled worker visa at that time. Right away? Right away. Oh. I just, it was actually very easy. I, I just did some research on the website, and then I, it was two pages, fill out, give in, that's it. And when then, when was that? 2007. Uh -huh. And then I waited two years, and after two years or and a half or something, I had to hand in, you know, the whole bunch with translation of birth certificate, um, the work history, the way you live, all the details. I handed that in, and then there was a year, nothing. It was always kind of they needed a year to process, process that all. One year. I don't know, kind of. Yeah, I feel it felt like. So, is that correct that the embassy moved actually from Berlin, not the embassy, but, but the Department of Immigration, the German Department of Immigration moved from Berlin to Vienna? Yes, they closed the immigration section of Can't the Canadian that. embassy in Berlin and it was moved uh, to, to Vienna. To the Austrians? Yeah. But, but is, isn't Austria uh, differently, pardon me? Small. <laughs> yeah, it's small. <laughs> but I mean, no, but yeah, yeah. Is, isn't Austria differently handled than Germans, for example? I mean, I mean contingency-wise. For example, don't they say uh, Germany, um, okay, we let in um, 5,000 people from Germany and 3,000 people from Austria in proportion to the population or something like that? <laughs>
they cannot say we discriminate against those because, uh, but there is a certain, like, you know, immigration per year is 250,000, so that's, you know, including everything, family sponsorship, refugees, blah, blah, blah. But, but there are a lot of people with whom I've talked uh, who were uh, refused or couldn't get, get their, their landed immigrant immigration, and they were kind of, they've tried to find reasons, right? Why didn't I get it and all that? And then they start to complain that, well, from, uh, from countries where, there, where there's a political uh, problem, uh, they easily open up the borders, uh, and, and I'm uh, so qualified, they don't let me in. I mean, it's a policy of Canada, absolutely, to help people who have political problems in their country. Yeah. So they open the doors and they say, you, are, you can find refuge here. This is a, just a different law, right? So well, you, you would just... Uh, yeah, you refugee would say, law. That's it's refugee law, you yeah. cannot compare it. Yeah, you, you shouldn't compare it because, you know, yeah. there are people in, in dire straits and, well, if someone from Germany, Austria, Switzerland arrives, I mean... Who's good qualified, uh, he, but He was very well qualified, refused, but yeah. maybe because his profession is not in demand here or he his English knowledge yeah. isn't, you know, uh, up to uh, speed. I mean, there could be a, a exactly. huge so amount of uh, factors that went against it, and maybe he didn't retain a very well qualified lawyer who could have assisted him. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, no, really. So, you sometimes need a good lawyer uh, to. Well, yeah. to avoid, you know, falling into yeah. the traps because a yeah. well qualified person should make it, but there's always some preparation to be done, and if you prepare properly, yeah. then it goes relatively smooth. Theoretically, you could not be a refugee with a, come over with a refugee status from Germany. That's well, the point, huh? you the, cannot I, do I that. Remember, or from I, Austria. I remember there was this family that said, well, you know, we want to homeschool our kids. They were from Germany and claimed refugee status because so that's, homeschooling is not so allowed. So we're giving our in, viewers some ideas. Huh? Yeah, homeschooling <laughs> is not allowed in Germany. Oh, I see. By law, you cannot keep your kids home and school them. But getting back, Tini, there are, there are different stages, though. No, we. I know interns who have this one-year work and travel visa. Uh, that's up to thirty-five, uh, age of thirty-five. Is that same thing? Austria and Switzerland, no? Germany, Austria, Switzerland, all the same. Thirty-five is the they're, age. No? no, no, they're all different. Germany is up to thirty-six. Oh. Austria is different. Some have half a year. Some have a full year. Oh. In Germany, you can even get two of those visas. Switzerland, again, is completely different, so mm -hmm. they all have different programs. What is the next step, the, the next program? So let's say I, I stayed here now one year or six months. Yeah. I would like to stay longer, maybe continue working in that company uh, where I worked as an intern. Uh, what would that be? Would that be LMO, the labor you market? Could, you could apply for a or so young, young professional right? labor market labor. opinion. Mm -hmm. So for a work permit, what, what I recommend if they are here in BC, Alberta, no matter where, most provinces run provincial programs, they're called. Mm -hmm. And if you have a job offer, and that has to be in a full-time permanent job offer, you can immigrate. You get an early work permit so you can stay mm -hmm. and while your immigration your permanent residency as it's called right now not any more landed immigrant uh -huh. you can keep working and eventually you get your uh, permanent residency or the other option is the temporary work permit through a labor market opinion usually I don't recommend that because you only get one year what kind of costs are involved actually mm -hmm. you mean application yeah, fees? Yeah, the uh -huh. LMO is uh, cost free Oh. But the work permit, it's two different things. First, you have to get a labor market opinion mm -hmm. from the so-called Service Canada compared to an Arbeitsamt. Uh -huh. And they say, yes, we need this person. And then once you have this letter, they tell you, yeah, we need you. Then you go and request a work permit. The work permit is $150. Mm -hmm. Whereas the provincial program, they right away request $550 application right. fees. And later on for okay. permanent residency, again, $550. And for landing, $490 per person, per adult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for All one right. person, one adult person, 1500 Canadian dollars. Now, let's say I'm five years here, have my permanent residency, when can you apply for a Canadian citizenship or would you actually apply for Canadian citizenship as an Austrian <laughs> person?
Well, do you have to? I, I, well, or no, can no, you keep no. the I permanent know. residency for 30 years? No, you can. You correct me, but I know that I have to be physically in Canada two years in the five years time. And they tell you when you come into with your permanent residency status, they tell you you've been out the country. You know that you have to mm. say they they kind of let you know. And uh, then I can keep it, and I think I can extend it. And after five years, I can apply for citizenships. But that's a oh, bit or not citizenship four years. Four after years, four years. So after kind of, well, but that depends. I mean, uh, the only thing I cannot do is um, I think is voting. Everything else I can do now. Let's say I've gotten out my permanent residency here. After that, I can do whatever I want, right? I can, I can travel around, I can go back to Germany, I can do this, I can do that. How, how, how does it work? Is it is it a common sense thing that you say, okay, wherever you earn your money, you pay your taxes? Or would you then say, no, uh, I actually can pick. Um, I work here five months and then maybe in Austria six months. I can decide either paying my tax here or there and then pay the difference to each country or so. So can you give, give us a quick idea? of? You wish. You're talking to an immigration lawyer. That's <laughs> what we do with our, that's where my tax lawyer comes in. Yeah, because assist. they're going to ask you, right? They're going to ask you, so yeah. uh, why but do I have to pay my taxes now? You know, we, we take a specialist in, depending mm. on how easy it is, but usually that's, that's done in conjunction with a tax specialist. Yeah. That is usually so you can pretty generalize. Straight, straightforward, yeah. but for entrepreneurs it's a whole different kettle of fish. And uh, just to correct you a little bit, with yeah. the permanent residency, like Tini said, you cannot just leave here. You have to always keep in mind, two years out of five year period, you have to be in Canada and you have to prove it. Otherwise you cannot renew your permanent residence oh. status. I see. You I cannot, said once you got your citizenship. Ah. Yeah, once you have your citizenship. Okay, got That's it. why many people try very hard to Just get their exemption, so they have dual citizenship. Tini, you mentioned earlier regarding you had some hurdles, but then suddenly uh, you said you, you you were pretty lucky. Actually, it came a little bit like a miracle to me because it took such a long time, and then um, I heard stories. It was in autumn, I think, or autumn, winter in 2012, that they started to cancel hundreds of thousands of applications. Hundreds of thousands? Really, really a lot, wow. which were uh, applied before 2006, you correct the numbers then, yeah. in 2007. And I was 2007, so I was really scared that I will, that, that's it and it's over. But the thing is that it sped things up, so I was just... Well, the current government decided that the, the backlog got bigger and bigger, although it got bigger and bigger under their reign already. They decided to just eliminate all this backlog, throw all the applications out, starting from a specific date. And I'm assuming because Tini's application was already processed, so she was probably already through before they started saying no more. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's awful for people who've been in the queue for four years, and but then they get told, sorry. Okay, I mean, our time is running out now. Anyway, thank you very much, Monica. And um, Tini, uh, welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, one more Austrian in Canada. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Great. Like thank you very you. much. Thank and you. Uh, for you viewers, uh, please don't forget, um, like us on Facebook um, and follow us on Twitter. And we have also, of course, a website, ahontv.com. See you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.